So I just want to go over a little bit of data store architecture and you know what's happened over the last, you know, I don't know, 10 years, 7 to 10 years, um, moving from really the transactional database model into these NoSQL approaches. So I really want to look at this at a very high level. Um, and if we look at like a database management system, uh, these have been around since, let's just say, like the 70s, right? Um, these, these, these are really matured. They're a great set of technologies. They provide a lot of benefits. Um, and they do it at, at quite a large scale. Now, you know, what's become popular in terms of like the idea that, that you know, SQL databases are not scalable, um, there, are, there is some merit to that. Um, but there's also a lot of benefits that you get with SQL. So I don't try to like, um, you know, recommend SQL or no SQL. It really depends on the environment, depends on the people who are using it and developing for it, it depends on the use cases, right? Um, so the reason why a SQL database, quote unquote, has become problematic is typically the idea of like transactions. So transactions are a problem um, because they guarantee a lot. <laughs> So when you say to a database, I uh, typically will say, you know, write this to disk, you know, here's the lines of code, and do it now. And once it's done, it'll say, okay, I've done it, everything's happy, you're good to go. Now, that's great. I mean, that's really powerful um, to have these like atomic units of work that are actually, you know, put serialized on the disk, put on the disk. Um, and then so when you're doing reads, you're going to get that same data. Um, that's really, really, really powerful. Um, I mean, you can't do like things like banking without that, right? Um, so this is really important. This is the reason why. Um, so when NoSQL kind of started coming to the table, the big thing that they did was really remove the ability um, for transactions. Um, so if you look at something like Mongo, um, and they're, they're all a bit different, but the idea is a little bit more like eventual consistency, where Instead of having logic, um, you know, logic right in your database being run, um, so if you're looking at like SQL Server, that's looking at like TSQL and, and commands like that. So now your, your database not only has to write to disk, um, but also has to have like business logic or logic in it. And so this is quite hard to scale as well. Um, so those are kind of the areas where uh, the SQL approaches have challenges at seriously large scale load. Whereas the NoSQL approaches, what they've basically done is they've, in a lot of cases, kind of said, you know, so no transactions and no logic can be run within uh, the NoSQL data stores. Now, what does that mean architecturally? I mean, you still need logic with your application. Um, so what they've done really is kind of enforced what people were doing anyways, is you actually move your logic um, out onto like typically like a web tier or some sort of um, you know, server processing tier. So this is a big architectural change um, in terms of what, you know, what we were doing as computer science, computer industry, um, up until, let's say, like 2005, um, we would have, you know, we would have servers. Um, they would do, let's just say, less. Um, and a lot of logic would be run within your data tier. Uh, this is now kind of uh, changing, where your data tier is having enough issues, so let's not confuse things. Um, and let's just, with the NoSQL approach, take the logic out of the data tier, and then the, the NoSQL is really what it cares about, is the ability to query it and the ability for it to write to disk. Um, and it, it can do that in various ways. Um, I can't get into all the specifics there. It's a broad technology, but the idea being there a little bit more along the lines of eventual consistency and moving slightly away from the transactional model, typically. Um, but you're going to have to write your logic outside um, of your data store. So, in you know, in the .NET world, well, there's a lot of different code we can talk about here. But like, we're looking at like you know, SQL Server. This would be TSQL. And now, if you want to move on to something more similar to this, 
you'd actually have to take the TSQL and move that into C sharp code. And so this is quite challenging for a lot of people, a lot of companies to get their heads around. Um, because the idea is that, you know, you can move that logic out into your, your Node.js or C Sharp code, um, but now the problem will be is you may be introducing more latency. Whereas with the TSQL, you're more tightly coupled to the data. The reads and writes happen extremely quickly. Here, if you're doing a lot of round trips, you can really slow down your application. Um, so these are kind of balances that you need to figure when you're looking at choosing the right storage technology. I think I'm going to stop there. Um, the big thing I wanted to point out is with either, either approach, you have to think about um, the actual storage of your data um, and then how and where you're going to do your logic. Um, so, you know, look at these technologies, really figure out what's right for the type of data that you have, um, and then figure out how you can implement that in a really efficient way. Anyways, I hope this was interesting. I think it's a pretty big shift that's happened. Um, and sometimes it's you know, not as evidently pointed out as I would like to see. Um, just the idea of moving that logic from where it, it did exist historically, and then what people are doing uh, to enable it today. Anyways, have a good day. And hit me on Twitter, Jeff King ABC. Bye.